All right, this is a little uh, Class D amplifier that I bought off of eBay. It's a 5-volt uh, device, and um, it has a little filter cap here and some other caps and stuff, and it has a volume. It has a volume knob. It's actually stereo. It has uh, left and right channels in and left and right channels out, and then power in. So this is 5-volt power. I have just the left channel wired up. And I'm bringing in just the left channel. We'll only look at one half of this thing. So that's the device. They're super cute. They're super tiny. Um, they're very efficient with power. Um, I don't know what kind of quality fidelity comes out, but a lot of times you just want to make a sound loud and you're not too worried about fidelity. So something like this would probably be just fine. The part number of this chip is a PAM8403. Okay, we're looking at the differential signal here. The yellow trace is, uh, the, say, the plus drive, and the blue trace is the minus drive. It's a differential drive. And so um, it's, it's, uh, it requires two scope probes because you can't connect ground to one of the outputs. It needs to be floating. And so uh, we, can look at, we can look at the relationship between the two. Now, as I turn the volume up, so I'm, I'm putting in a 5 kilohertz tone. As I increase the uh, volume of the amplifier, you can see that this this, this dithering between the two is going to is going to uh, get bigger and bigger because we're going to need uh, uh, we're going to need more signal. So that's basically what's going on. Is you have these. It's not exactly pulse width modulation, but you can think of it as pulse width modulation, and um, the difference between the signals you 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 build up. You build up a waveform, and so yeah, this is uh, the plus and the minus uh, reference to, to one another. I can move I can move one down a little bit so you can see that. And so that uh, that wiggling is happening at five kilohertz, and um, we're looking here at a two hundred nanosecond uh, two hundred nanosecond uh, picture here. And so you're getting you're getting dithering because of the uh, uh, jittering because of the uh, triggering of the of the oscilloscope. Let's see if we can't get a better picture of that. So uh, what I've done to do that is, like I said, you cannot hook the scope probes up to these uh, uh, the plus and the minuses because you'll you'll ground something out. But if you have a uh, I'm getting a glare off getting a glare off of this one. If you have a uh, a battery-powered oscilloscope, then the ground is floating, and you can hook it up. So I, I have uh, uh, I have it hooked up to the uh, to the plus and the minuses. Now uh, I have this trigger level set so that it will only trigger on positive edges and 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 when they go below ground here. So anyway, um, if you think about this, it's like pulse width modulation. It, it gets wider and then it gets narrow and then it goes to the bottom and it goes wider and it gets narrow and it goes to the top. So think of a sine wave. A sine wave in, in uh, if you slowed it way down, right, it would get, it would get bigger and bigger and bigger, then slow it down, 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 down. And if you were doing that with this pulse width modulation, then when it's first starting to come up, you only need little tiny little narrow pulses. And as it gets bigger and bigger and bigger, you need wider and wider pulses. And then as it goes down to the negative side, you need to do things. You start out uh, thin, and then you go wide, and then you go thin again. So that's exactly what's happening here. Um, and because we're sampling it, we, we get to see it like a, a, a stroboscope, and we can slow down the motion because we're, we're triggering uh, off of frequency. And so, um, yeah, we get bigger, and then we get smaller, and then we get at the bottom, we get bigger, and we're smaller. Now, if we, let's see here, if we slow this, oops, I'm going the wrong way. If we slow this down, we can kind of get kind of a picture of what's going on. Um, let's see here, sort of around here. Um, we can see it's kind of, it's kind of a sine wave. It's going plus and then it's going minus, uh, plus and then minus. And sometimes it's wide, sometimes it's narrow, but mostly it's wide in the middle and mostly it's narrow when it's crossing zero. And the reason it looks funny again is because we have this stroboscopic effect. We're only we're only sampling it every every once in a while, and uh, 
if uh, if it were like average turned on, we could get a we could get a big picture. I don't know if this scope will do averaging or not. I don't think it will. Uh, I don't believe it will. Um, but anyway, I hope that gives you an idea of this strange uh, uh, class D amplification. It 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 you're building up a waveform kind of artificially, and uh, it requires a lot of care to make them to make them sound good because you get all the spurious harmonics and all kinds of edges and noise and all kinds of stuff in there. But it's very, very power efficient and that's why people do it. You're only sending ones and zeros. That's all you're doing. You're sending positive ones and negative ones and positive ones and negative ones and nothing in between. Um, over here we can see uh, the signal is either high or low. It's nowhere, it's nowhere in between. And uh, that's the way you save so much energy. Uh, the two transistors are, aren't fighting one another. They're not uh, eating up power like a like a class A B amplifier. There's a oh, there's an overlap, and a class A amplifier, of course, the transistor's on all the time. So, yeah, it's much much uh, much much more efficient. But uh, you can see here. Uh, yeah, let's uh, let me show you on this little scope here as I increase the uh, what what I was doing as I was uh, twiddling the knob here and I was increasing the uh, volume. And as I increase the volume, we get more and more of this, this jittering. And here, it's actually interesting to look at because as we go down in volume, there's hardly anything. And then as we go up and up and up in volume, it starts building up that waveform. And as we get really, really loud, then it kind of starts looking like a really bad sine wave, right? Um, but averaged over time, it will, it will all, it will all be good. But I think. If you think about it a bit, you can imagine why maybe Class D amplifiers don't give you the best fidelity. All right, so if you try to look at the um, the waveform, you're just going to get <laughs> garbage. Uh, it's really, really difficult just to look at the waveform. But uh, I have found a use for my uh, my uh, filter, uh, my auto, my uh, uh, audio filter model 3103 and I've set it to look I'm I'm sending through a, a one kilohertz sine wave and I'm going to set the uh, band pass to uh, 800 Hertz to uh, 125 Hertz uh, 100 uh, one one point one point five kilohertz will go between uh, 80 800, there we go, 800 hertz and 1.5 kilohertz. So the one kilohertz will be, will be right in the middle. And uh, let's go ahead and connect that. And I'm not connecting the ground up because I don't want a ground loop. So it'll just have to be uh, sort of coupled in. And this should work out okay. And so, like I said, we have a, a, a band pass centered at one kilohertz. And there we go, our, our, uh, our waveform magically, magically looks nice. So there is information at one kilohertz. It's just cluttered with, with all kinds of stuff. And uh, I was able to filter out all the other stuff using, the, uh, using this uh, filter here. And uh, at least we get to look at it. So uh, you might find these um, little class D amplifiers just on a board. I also found these, like the one I, one, well, the one I was testing that has a uh, pentiometer added, added to it. Now, these go for about a dollar each. And uh, I, I think I bought, I think, I think I bought five for five dollars. And they didn't even separate them. You can uh, break them apart. Oh, this one even has a little side tab on it. Let me see if I can, I can break it. Yeah, there we go. Break the little side tab off. So anyway, yeah, for a dollar. I think they're three watts. They claim to be three watts per channel. And like I said, they're five volts. So uh, great for little projects. I like the five, the, you know, the single rail five volt nature of them, which is really nice for, uh, for things. So you might even consider uh, getting rid of the LM386, uh, right? <laughs> and just use one of these, I don't know.